streaming at a different time. So, so no pressure on us for anything. We get to just do whatever we want. Oh, Today. good. So you guys can like edit everything. Great. Oh, <laughs> I don't edit shit. I'm just like, oh, someone said something funny. Ha, huh, okay, that stays in. Oh, someone oh, said something well. dumb. Oh, that stays in. It's all in. <laughs> Wow, I just oh. saw a trailer. I think this is for Elder Scrolls, and a bear threw a robot at a guy, and the guy cut it in midair. That's a helpful bear, right? Okay, there. that's kind of cool. Yeah. That's I a, didn't know bears threw things. That's a bear that'll help you out if you got a problem. The helpful bears. That would be a good raid team name for a druid ball. Oh, or really? all druid team. Yeah. Helpful bears. No, they're the kind of people who uh, they, they sell runs for different things. You know, like. Uh, you know, when people are doing friendship moose and everything, it's the helpful bears. The helpful bears. I like it. I like it. Yeah. There's three I of them. There's Mama, Papa, and too. Baby. Yeah. You have to be a, a druid or a Pandaren. Yes, that works. Well, no, a druid guardian bear specifically. You can't be any other druid. Are they the Berenstein bears or the Berenstein bears, though? Uh, so Berenstein I'm one of those people saying. that called it steen forever and then found out it was stain and was like what Wait, what yeah it's Baron i'm stain. not what? calling them baron stain bears <laughs> no. where, where did you find out those baron stain i have never heard that before look, in my life look it up it's that whole mandela effect thing oh no no yeah. it's baron stain. your poor mind will get so warped and it's then you won't believe not anything ever again spelled that way i mean it's like what do you do? Oh, oh man, I was carrying something really bad and heavy this morning. I was just trying to bear and stain it. I don't. I, don't <laughs> I didn't have a good bit. Yeah, to go but with I that. mean, just... I mean, Google it. It's it's not even spelled stain. Like why we all thought that. Oh, is beyond seriously? Me. Yeah, it's spelled bear and stain. Bear and stain. I don't know. <laughs> oh my God! It is bear and stain. Holy crap! Oh, my entire childhood has just gone to hell. Bop, bop, I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's fine. Um, okay, I do have to ask you guys, though. Do you, and this is going to be, like, way out of left field, but did you ever read the Amelia Bedelia books when you were a kid? Uh, I think so. I don't okay. remember. Was no. she, wasn't she, like, a maid that was clumsy? Yeah. And, see, the thing is, is I hated those books so much because I could not stand her. I'm like, she is the dumbest person ever. And I get that they're books trying to teach kids like, it's you know, like, oh, this is. Ben. No, it's not teaching tolerance. It's teaching like, <laughs> you know, uh, like synonyms or Hahnemann, Hahnemanns, um in like logic and, and things like that. And it pissed me off so much. And my mom kept getting like the books from the library. She's like, oh, hey, you should, you know, read this, read this. I'm like, I hate this woman. But oh. I had nothing else to read, so I'd still read it, and just like my my hate for her would grow and grow as a kid. She was like your book friend of me. Oh my gosh, so much so. I'm like, she wanted you to pitch a tent, not throw it across the room. You're an idiot. We're not just doing phrasing. Oh. No, no, absolutely nothing to do with phrasing. It's a kid's book, <laughs> and she's a she. I mean, so, I all I'm gonna say. Now. You said she wanted you to pitch a tent, and that's where you lost me. So no, yep. I want. Okay, well, good point. Our, brain, our brains are on the same wavelength. <laughs> yeah. that makes me feel better about my own brain. You just well, gotta know is that... I'm getting off the train here, Ben, and that was the moment. That was. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, is my mind went there too. It started as soon as I started saying it, but it was the first example I could think of because I actually remembered that from the book as a kid. So I'm like, oh, we're just gonna run with this crap. Yeah, so. that just came out my mouth. Whoops. I read yeah. Clifford the Big Red Dog. I always wanted to read Clifford, but all those books were always checked out. Because he's a big red dog. Yes. I wasn't a big fan of Curious big. George. No. But I think it was more of a, I wanted to read it, but again, they were always checked out too. So I never really experienced a lot of Curious George. I was never one of those people, and I still am not, that thought monkeys enhanced things. Wait, you've never I'm heard sorry. this theory? <laughs> that was the most random thing. I knew it's we were going to talk about random things, but monkeys and <laughs> okay, all right. I need to hear more. Well, Tell me no, more. It, it's Why just don't the monkeys whole... enhance things? It's just, oh, 
Oh, so you're on that side. <laughs> I I like Lucky You. Like, I don't know. As soon as people are like, what if it's a like what if in the door comes a monkey in a cowboy hat? And like I only imagine two scenarios. Like most people are like, Oh, it'd be adorable, monkey and cowboy hat. I just immediately think I'm gonna get poop thrown at me or my face chewed off. Like those well, are the two Well hold on, let's narrow this down. John, are you thinking monkey or chimpanzee? Any. Like I Well just... there's a difference. Th- well, first no, of all, I chimpanzee know there's is an a ape. difference, but either way, and they're, I they're big and they have the giant swing, and they are the ones who do, who will like tear off your face and stuff like that. But I mean, like a little tiny capuchin monkey, it's not going to tear off your face. But it might try, and it's so small you don't want to mess with it. <laughs> oh my goodness! Like this little monkey just like kind of like like grabbing your cheek and pulling on it a little bit. It's like when your grandma pinched your cheek. They have teeth. What if the well, monkey's a grandma? <laughs> like literally a grandma or dressed as a grandma either one yes. maybe both both would be good. it's a really old monkey in like a, an old floral dress and a, a gray bonnet. wig and yeah <laughs> i think it's because the people who have monkeys monkey always have them in diapers and it just makes me think that something's up mm. <laughs> well yeah i got nothing they're collecting poop. That's what they do. It's just like how birds, like having a bird friend seems cool. Like, uh, oh, like birds are the worst. Everywhere. Yeah, until you realize that just they're just a flowing system. There's no self-control. It's just in and out all the time. It's like, hi, I'm a bird. Let me sit on your shoulder. Hey, look, I pooped. Yeah. We don't care because we're birds. <laughs> that's Yep, and that's how they talk. All birds mm-hmm. and... <laughs> Tweet, motherfucker. <laughs> wow. I don't know. It's Saturday. It's different. Oh, man. We should record on Saturday more. Ben gets all sweary <laughs> and weird. Really tired. I did not sleep well last night. Uh, this is still the pre-show, but parts of it might end up in the show. <laughs> I don't That's think how that... Azeroth Roundtable works. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know if that bird bit will. <laughs> That's kind of like... That's almost too much even for me. But it'll be on YouTube, so check it out there. A... Even Yay! though you're live, so yeah. There's a person outside who's free. Yes, I do out. have Starbucks from yesterday. What is your Starbucks order? Usually it's a white chocolate mocha, but with Ooh. soy. Uh, this one is actually a uh, the remains of a caramel frappuccino that was bought during the buy one get one free during happy hour. Oh, yesterday. happy hour! Yeah. The midnight mint mocha frapp is amazing. It's like a <laughs> But liquid. That's what I hear. Yeah, Sarah got that. She picked this up for me yesterday, and she's really sweet Aww. because of it. I love Sarah. So do I. Good. <laughs> I love her more than you do. Well, yeah, duh. We would <laughs> hope. I would expect that. We kind of yeah. together. So that's the thing. So, yeah. 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 Yay! But she is good people. Definitely. Tell her I said hi. Is she there? Uh, Somewhere. <laughs> okay. <laughs> frozen She's carbonite around, you know. in the back wall. <laughs> <laughs> That's one yeah, way to look young. Just keep her like that every night. <laughs> Good night, honey. <laughs> time to Okay, time for bed. <laughs> That's the sound they make. They make, they make the Wild West sound when you're frozen <laughs> in It's a little known Suddenly fact. a tumbleweed goes by. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't... It's... He got cut out of Empire Strikes Back, but you can bet it happened. <laughs> oh my goodness. Then the creeps over there just saying, Warcraft. it's bedtime. I know. Oh man. All right. We should talk about Warcraft. We yes. should do this. We should do the thing. Yeah. Um. By the way, Kara, do you mind doing the, uh, hi, I'm Kara. You can find me at wherever. You don't like have the to intro? do it like that though. Cause I no. <sighs> And see, I, I always totally over exaggerate it. I've listened to you guys enough to know that you're going to try to fuck me up when I do this. So no, you're, you're not Justin. Gotta, it's okay. I got to figure out what to say because I don't have like a billion podcasts like everybody else does. I'm just me. I'm just here. Well, that could be the intro. Mm-hmm. Hi, I'm Zandara, and you're listening to As Around the Round Table. That's great. That's per- what we're going to use. Perfect. Except I didn't yeah. do the transition thing, so we need it again. Oh. Bum, bum, bum. 
Oh, okay, so yeah. Uh, just do it again whenever. Right. We're good. One more time. Yeah. All right. Hi, I'm Zanzara, and you're listening to Azeroth Roundtable. Bum 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 bum. <laughs> I love this last time, right? <laughs> <laughs> I just tried to keep it consistent. That works. <laughs> Welcome to Azeroth Roundtable, episode 216. My name is Ben Bumhofer, and with me, as always, is John Jagger. How's it going, John? Hello, Ben. It's Saturday morning here in Azeroth, and that changes things up quite a bit. But just I'm still here, and I'm still happy to be taking a seat at the round table. But it's not just us. Oh, no. No. It me! <laughs> <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> I am in a super giggly mood, so you guys got to bear with me. Hi, everybody. I'm Kara. I'm Sandara on Twitter. Um, in Warcraft, all the places and things. Thanks for having yeah. me on, you guys. Of Thanks course. for joining us. Yeah. Hi. You're good people. We like good people. We thought, hey, let's talk to Kara today. Yay! Yeah. We have no idea what to talk about. Oh, that's every week. <laughs> yeah, that's I mean, we've already fun. covered so many topics. We've talked about <laughs> monkeys and birds and big red dogs, mostly animals. And uh, Amelia Bedelia. Amelia uh, Bedelia, not an animal. I hate her. But Ben doesn't like, like her, one, no. so... She hate her. Seriously. But uh, you know what I don't hate? Is story in WoW. <gasps> That's yeah. good. Okay, so... Um, we're kind of going back to this just because I've finally been doing something with it. Hey, John, remember how uh, you and I talked before about how Suramar just kind of like, uh, and takes forever and we don't really care about doing it and everything? Yes, but I was very positive about it when I said it. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I know. But uh, did you ever did you ever do the full second part of the story? No. OK, because Kara, I loved have you... it so much <laughs> that I'm saving it forever. Oh, OK. It's like that. That's a book where you don't read the last page because that means it's not over. yet. Yeah, exactly. Exactly like that. Because it's not okay. like you can't reread it or play an alt you know you got john her. doesn't play alts exactly yeah um but kara did you go through do do the second suramar quest line story thing i think so just finishing out suramar completely uh kind of so okay um i just hit my mic sorry um so okay you know how you go through you get and by the way suramar spoilers it's been out forever Sorry. Um, but, you know, you get the tree and then you're giving fruit to people and everybody's all happy and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you get the the good. Oh, my gosh. Hold on. Windows is trying to update. No, no, no. Windows. News. Windows. Oh, yes. What the hell? You, you know not to update at noon. Suramar. <laughs> Apparently. OK. Windows is present. <laughs> um, no. Anyways. So, you know, you, you get the tree, you start feeding the fruit to people and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Well, when you get the tree, that's kind of the good Suramaritan achievement. And then that that I consider to be part one. Yep. OK. So it took me forever to get through that. And then finally, I'm just like everybody's riding around on their Arcanus Mac uh, mana sabers and they look really cool and stuff. So I'm like, oh, I should probably, you know, end up doing that and everything. So I get in there. And it's been, you know, months since it's been out. So, you know, I, I start doing the storyline and, you know, going through the quests and everything. And I'm really getting into it. And it's really cool. And I'm like, hey, this is great. And I'm really enjoying this stuff because it's a whole chunk of story just right there for me. And it took me um, because, you know, I'm, you know, between raiding and life and other stuff, you know, I'm not going through just, you know, doing every single thing I can in one day. Um I was able to stretch it out over, you know, a, a week or two or something like that. And there's some really good story in there. And I really enjoyed it. And then the funny thing is that so I've been doing the weekly Broken Shore stuff as well, because, again, story is what I like. Mm -hmm. And the Broken Shore quest was. Wait a minute. Oh, the, the story <laughs> quests on the Broken Shore, the story of I need you to go close a bunch of rifts. Yeah, exactly. Th thank you. Come back yeah. in a week. And I but will it, give you another task to do. And that's the funny thing is, is because when I started doing this, like all of a sudden that was the thing I needed to do on the broken shore, which was, oh, um, go, you know, do go get sent Sentinax marks or whatever. And I'm like, oh, that's not all that fun. OK, well, I'll go back and do the the um, the the Surmar stuff. Great. So then I go back there and then 
the next quest, you know, after I'm like, I fed someone fruit, I'm like, okay, I'm all raring to go. This is going to be great story stuff. It's like, oh yeah, do this. And this really neat, cool thing happens. I'm like, okay, this is awesome. Obviously this is, you know, the bit that happened on this one week. Okay. I'll go ahead and jump into the next one. I'm super excited to do that. And then it's like, uh, don't, don't forget. You're the grandmaster of the monks do five order call missions. And I'm like, that's the next quest. Why the hell is Blizzard doing stuff like this? So the thing I wanted to talk about and to kind of bring up is, first of all, do we need stupid your week thing that you need to do this week is just busy work. Like, I know that they're trying to pad out the timelines, but even more so, is it better for Blizzard to try to, you know, do weekly story stuff as opposed to just giving people a nice big chunk of it at a time? And I know we, we've kind of touched on this here and there, but I really want us to, to, to think about this because I was having such a great time and then all of a sudden progress just dead ended. And then once oh. I was done with that, started up again and I had fun. So what's up with that? I think you figured out a, something bad that could be changed because they keep putting in all these new catch up mechanisms for people who are coming back to the game or when you're playing your alts, maybe mm -hmm. they need to go back and take out those missions from these week to week quests that are no longer week to week. You can just do them all at once without waiting week to week, take out like the order hall mission part. So it's not meant to hold you over for a time like we're at now with the broken shore waiting for the raid yeah. yeah that's i don't know if they'll ever fix it but that would be cool if they did well it'd be kind of nice especially with like uh the the order hall campaigns you know when you start from you know level 100 and you start going up through there's a couple points in there where it's like hey send this person on a mission and, and things like that trying to get you um you know in tune or or know what you're doing with the order hall stuff and, and everything like that now, John, I know that the Order Hall missions are your favorite things in the game. You constantly log in and run them, and, and that's what you're doing. Um, how would this affect your gameplay? Uh, the Order Hall missions, that's just where I send my followers out to do stuff, right? <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. Okay, exactly. that's, actually, that's actually the thing that I've been doing the most lately. <laughs> <laughs> it really has been. Yeah. Like Are you that's... using the app to do that? Yeah. I even, re I even reset up the app so I could do it more frequently. Because <laughs> um, I was like, I don't know. This seems okay. I, at first it was because I wanted to get everybody geared up. And then I wanted to level up Lillian Voss. Spoilers. And then I wanted to, uh, you know, then I was like, oh, well, I'll just get artifact power. And they they started unlocking those more challenging missions on the broken shore that i can only get like a 60 percent chance of completing and i'm like oh this is the best i'm gonna do uh i'll see you in three days followers <laughs> so you know those things have been kind of fun for me so i i actually would still be doing it but i know exactly what ben's talking about which is like uh you're going along and you're you're having a good time and then all of a sudden it stops feeling like a game or, or that's not even the right thing. It stops feeling like <laughs> a story and it starts feeling like this unseen force of blizzard stepped in and said, mm -hmm. Whoa, slow down you're progressing there too fast. Uh, and you're like, well, Hey blizzard, thanks for stepping in and ruining my immersion. What what's up? And they say, well, we don't have anything better for you to do right now. So I don't know if you could go just kill a hundred thousand demons that would be good just go kill a bunch of demons well yeah can you give me a reason i don't know they should probably die <laughs> they're demons they're, they're bad. demons you don't like them you should you should go kill them am i gonna I get a cut scene? This up. i swear they brought this up in the q a too where um ian has was talking about how that's not really the best thing that they put in but it's just something they had to do just to keep the timeline going or something i i'm really bad at paraphrasing the words of a dev but i think they're aware that they do this and it's not something they like to do yeah and i i would love to see them get away from it because you know i'm fine with quests that are you know some quests are going to be better than others um, yeah some things are just going to click with people better but sometimes quests stop feeling like i'm 
being told a story and even goes beyond like i'm playing a game because like mm -hmm. even if it was just like oh no get in you're playing a game that can be fun on its own level too sometimes it just feels like oh no here's blizzard just wants you to spend x amount of time in the game yeah you're like okay well i guess because i want to progress um and it's tough and and so the the marks of the sentinax i think that's what it, how it's pronounced was the first one that i was like uh and then i just went down and i got into a group with it and then i ended up on a pvp server and there was this oh. PvP player that was just ganking us non-stop and then i just decided to go back to my own realm where i wasn't going to get ganked and there was another group running around farming marks for him and i just started repeatedly opening portals around him and getting them attacked by everything <laughs> in the world and i was just like they can handle it open open <laughs> open open and just like constantly activating gates and so these things are just swarming on them and we did fine and so i <laughs> i ended up getting all the marks very quickly um because i subjected this poor group that i was not even a part of to all the portals uh and that was so that was quick but now i'm at the other one which is the i don't remember the exact number i think it might be a hundred or 50. is it, is it just 50. oh okay. wait is it 50 marks and then 100 demons or vice versa i thought it was 100 and 100. Eh, well regardless it's too many yeah like now i just got to go kill 100 demons and and it's just grindy enough to where I was like, eh, maybe I don't want to work on so, this right now. First of all, John, the, the trick behind that one is go to Fell Soul Hold and then go to I'm the sorry, spot say where. Say that again a little faster. Fell, Fell Soul Hold? No, faster. Fell Soul Hold? <laughs> okay. Okay. One you more you time. go to one of the Fell Soul Hold? <laughs> okay. What are you trying to get me I, to say? Nothing. It just sounds really funny. One more time? Yeah. Also hold. Who's <laughs> Roda? Like I just imagine you're you're the dragonborn and you're doing something every time you say yeah. it. Okay, one more. Yeah, thing. I'm trying to tell a story, so I say uh, you know Felso hold. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so you go there to one of the anti-air guns, get on that, and then just shoot the bats. That's oh. all you do. Well, all right. I went and found a spot where a million imps were spawning, and I just AOE'd them. That's a good way to do it, too. And I love uh, my mom, but I did it while I was talking on the phone with my mom because that's <laughs> so brainless. You just go yeah. there and pew, 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 everything. And I think maybe that's part of it, too, is these quests are really just brainless. You don't yeah. have to think. It doesn't immerse you in, in the world. It, the worst part about those is that it's not even on the broken shore. It's just, hey, go somewhere else and kill stuff. Because I started killing demons on the broken shore. I'm like, this is going to be great. I can do this and this and... Oh, I can't double dip. I can't do my world quests and kill demons. Well, I'm killing demons though. That's the point of this entire thing. And no, uh, it doesn't matter. So Yeah. I do kind of like that though, how they sent us back to a zone that we probably maybe wouldn't have gone to again anyway, because it's mm -hmm. considered old at this point, which is kind of funny. <laughs> but I like if if they had the story told a little bit better to explain why we're going back there. I mean, they tried. I'll give them that. They tried. But it still just went over everyone's head anyway. Um, but giving us reasons to go back to the old places to secure them like we do during the Legion invasions, maybe. Um, having these weekly world quest things, story quests, whatever they're called, uh, wouldn't be as bad if they tied in a little better. Well, even if they had us going to like old world stuff, I'd actually be a lot more happy with that. It's like, um, you know, heroes, uh, northern barons is being attacked. Go kill a hundred demons there, or something like the that. Crossroads is under attack. The crossroads is under attack. The crossroads <laughs> is under attack. Wait, what? Crap. <laughs> Not again. But I mean, you know, just it, they they had them attack other worlds or other zones and stuff before do the same thing because again we're supposed to feel like azeroth is in danger not the broken shore is in danger right and the broken isles and just that little area it, it it i don't know it feels like it'd be a little better just to send us out as opposed to just oh well we, you know this place where there's a bunch of demons that we know of and then over there who so, cares about the rest of the stuff so every now and then on this show i admit to uh the dark secret that is that I occasionally get back into the old Republic from time to time and play it. 
Um, it's my dark passenger. Uh, if I was Dexter, that's my big secret. Is um, <laughs> you know, occasionally I play Old Republic. It's a pretty um, dang big secret there, yeah, Jumpster. I just shared this it with This is brand everybody. new information. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, but what I, I but what I find interesting, and when we start to compare story between. Uh, wow and old republic and i actually found myself thinking the opposite recently as i was going through their new expansion which was uh for those who don't know the way old republic has been doing their expansions lately is they do them in chapters and they experimented with doing i think it was a chapter a month on a previous expansion and you would get a chapter of the story and then you could go do your world stuff and then the next month a new chapter would come out mm -hmm. then they just said all right we're putting out the expansion here's all the chapters go for it and uh netflix it and what so happens though, and though, chill? is that your your experience with the chapters they flow into each other it's not like you finish the chapter and there's this, like, to be continued, and then you're like, okay, boot up the next chapter. It just goes. And if you want to go do auction house things or interact with other people or, you know, do anything beyond the story content, you actually have to forcibly remove yourself from the story instance, and then you can go back to it when you're ready to. Um, and so I kept finding myself almost with story fatigue where I was like, oh, I could use a little break here because you are just hitting me relentlessly with story at the moment. And it's a bit much. And sometimes it's so compelling. You don't want to quit because you just know you're like, OK, well, I'll get to the break. And then the break is like a big cliffhanger. And you're like, well, gosh, dang it. Now I guess it's like when you try to read a book at night before bed and then you get to that part where you just can't put it down. And next thing you know, it's sunrise. And you <laughs> yep, and you're like, well, OK, and now Whoops. I'm now I've ruined my life. And so that's what I call the Harry Potter plague. <laughs> Doesn't matter how many times I read him. I just keep reading. Just go. Just go till it's done. So it, it's interesting because I do think being able to give people breaks and time to work on other things, especially when you're a game as big as WoW, is important. Um, but I think it's also important to keep the content, you know, as much of the content as you possibly can compelling. And it sounds like, because I, um, I do remember that interview you mentioned. I do remember him saying it wasn't ideal or, you know, exactly what the quote was, but... Uh, it sounds like they're aware of it, and so hopefully it's something that they address. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it kind of comes down to the whole idea of... Uh, well, first of all, uh, Kara, when did you down. start playing? Oh, gosh. So I started playing when the game first came out, but I played EverQuest as well. And I don't know if you guys are familiar, but there <laughs> used to be this server on EverQuest where you would pay $40 a month to have basically GM interaction every single day. So there was GM <laughs> events all the time, yep. and it was amazing. And for who I was at that time, it was totally worth it. Um, but I could not justify paying the $40 a month when all my friends were in EverQuest too, plus the Warcraft stuff when I didn't have any friends who switched over. So I put it down for quite a while, and then I picked it back up again towards the end of Wrath. Okay. So I started raiding um, in ICC. Okay. And then I've been playing pretty much solid since. So you've been around for a while, played through uh, Kata, mm -hmm. uh, Mists, all that fun stuff? Yep. I didn't really do a whole lot of raiding in Mists because Dragon Soul killed my raid team. But. <laughs> so raid working as intended. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But I have. <laughs> Since been uh, back into the raiding scene, uh, I am a part of CTR and I am on the Rubber Chicken Coalition raid team, and it has really changed my entire WoW experience to have a good group of people that you just run with every week. Okay, cool. Yep. So the big reason why I'm asking that is because I wanted to know if you were around for the release of Patch 5.1, which was. It's the most <laughs> celebrated was... patch of the show. Yeah. Um, Operation Shield Wall and Operation Dominance Offensive. I think that that's what the Horde one was. Um, it was the first big patch for Mists of Pandaria when 
uh, you know, you had like, okay, you do a couple dailies and then depending on where your reps at, you get a chunk of story. And, you know, like, so the first day you do, it's like, Hey, get a little bit of story. Next day, you just kind of do some dailies day after that you do some dailies day after that you could do some dailies. Then your reps high enough, you get another story chunk and things like that. So if I remember correctly, it can take, let's see, before they added the, the rep boost in there, it took John, what, like maybe three, four weeks or so before he got through the whole thing? Yeah, maybe even a little longer than that. I don't remember. I uh, Yeah, maybe that's about right. Because it was, at first it was every day you would see something, and then it got to where it was every other day. And I don't think it ever actually got any longer than that. Yeah, I think you're right. But, um, so the reason I bring that up is because I, I, I still think that that's one of the best ways that Blizzard has ever given us, like, content, you know, especially story content, which is what, um, at least from our perspective, a vast majority of people want. And granted, this is, you know, our listeners who, you know, they listened possibly because they kind of had the same ideas of what we have. Uh, plus, you know, a lot of our friends who play are, again, in it for the story and everything. So when you have something that is kind of handed to you over, you know, a few days for a few weeks and everything like that, I, I think it works better because it gives time for, you know, those breaks in between like John, you just were talking about with, with SWOTOR. Um, and even more so, it really gives people a reason to keep coming back in and playing. Like even if it's just to do a couple quests every day or whatever, whereas you know, if you look at the Suramar stuff or the the Broken Shore stuff, it's like, okay, cool. I've got a really neat story quest for the week. Okay, it's done. And now I don't have any reason to, one, log back in or two, you know, keep playing in that area or whatever um, until the next week. And then, you know, you're not even guaranteed a story, you know, quest or, or something along those lines. So I understand that they need to pad the time out, but it really feels like way back in 5.1, they actually had a better version of it. And they, they still haven't brought that whole concept back yet. And it's kind of, I don't know, it's frustrating to me. Well, let me ask you something. We don't, I don't think we take this route to it very much, which okay. is, you said, I understand they need to pad the content out. Do they need yes. to pad the content out? <laughs> because... I've been thinking about this recently and I'm not, again, I'm trying, I'm talking about a level of nuance here. I'm not talking about like, Hey, it's, you know, 7.2. Everything's in there right now. Go. You can fight the final boss. You can do whatever you need to do. Just go. I'm not talking about that level of extreme, but what I mean is like right now we're doing these kind of menial tasks week to week to week simply because they want this content to last. Is it so bad if we finish it early and have to find other things to do and be happy with and wow? I mean, you you said earlier I don't play alts, and it's true I, I don't for the most part. Um, I try to every now and then, but part of why I don't is because it all gets added to time that I'm putting on my main character. So, for example... Okay. I log in for a week, and they want me to go kill 100 demons. Okay, well, I now have to do that on my main, but what if I'm in the mood to play my alt? Okay, so I definitely have to do the kill 100 on my main. Now I also have to play my alt, and I have to do whatever requirements the alt has to do for whatever gated content they're currently dealing with. And it just keeps getting added and added. I feel like having downtime, as long as it's a reasonable amount of downtime, isn't the worst thing in the world like that's when you work on alts that's when you work on trade skills that's when you work on your progression in raids or farm dungeons and do all these other things that mmos are designed to let you do and i feel like if they're constantly trying to just carrot you uh carrot on a stick you through the whole thing uh, that's a verb i swear and if they keep of doing course it that is. it just it just adds to it and it can add a level of frustration of it's just too much if you want to do other things. I mean, for people that wow's all they do, it probably feels great. Um, but 
I don't know. I just don't know that we need the constant, like, drip feed, especially if the drip feed isn't very good. If it's fantastic content, they can string me along for as long as they want. But when it's, what's my thing this week? Kill 100 demons so that Illidan or my ever, whoever, can go, good job. <laughs> All right, thanks. Uh, here, that was the reward, wasn't it? Here's some shards. Okay. I guess I'll go gamble those away in 10 seconds. What else do I... And what do you get from gambling? Is there anything good in there? So far, all I've add. gotten is various oh, amounts of shards God. and the ability to teleport into a wall. John, I got thinking. scraps. Scraps. It's a little undead dog. It's great. Oh, you got a pet. Yeah. I got a the toy. Very, <laughs> the first chest I opened, I got my pet. I'm like, I'm good. Don't hey. need to do this anymore. Oh. I got the toy that is... One of those scrubbers, like in the Trilliax fight, but it's amazing because if you have a cat battle pet while you have this toy active, the cat will get on it and ride it around like a Roomba. That no. is all I wanted from that area in those chests, and I got it on like my third try. <laughs> it is so worth it. <laughs> you need a cat on a Roomba, like it. It makes Warcraft. So you beat Warcraft once you've got that. It sounds so John, like there's for you. things in there. <laughs> I haven't found them, but I will keep looking. Maybe well, John, I, I hope it's not a bonkers situation like I had, where I spent weeks and weeks throwing every single medallion I had at that stupid monkey. I don't. Does Back anybody else treat those chests like Indiana Jones, where you're like, "Yes, that is the chest of a carpenter." Like, and you go for the most humble-looking vanilla chest in the entire thing. You're like, clearly, it won't be in the nice chest in the middle. Like, it has to be this. Warcraft 3 ported over to WoW model chest that's made up of two polygons and hope, and you just open it up and eh, nothing. Eh, nothing well, there. John, I Indiana Jones it, and I'd go for the one that looks like the Ark of the Covenant. Oh, well, I mean, that's every funny. time. But then every you time look into it. That should kill you. And well, I got an undead <laughs> dog, so I did OK. It might eat your face. That might be your fate. Oh, yeah, good I don't point. Know. It's good to wait until it's the world quest, though, because then it's only 100 nether shards instead of, what is it, like one or 2,000 just to straight up buy it? Yeah, I think oh. so. Yeah. yeah. So I made a couple notes while you guys were talking. Uh, <laughs> it's my memory. Very is official. Too. You're way yeah. better than us. My memory's also bad, but I don't take notes, and I feel like I could learn something. <laughs> so you guys are talking about how you do the 100 grindy thing whatever it is for the week and then you're done for the story right well there's mm -hmm. kind of a good thing about that feeling of completion it's like okay i got this done i'm done with this for the week i can do all my other stuff now and i've been playing warcraft as pretty much my main game um like i'll dabble into hearthstone and heroes here and there but war it's usually warcraft and so lately what i've been doing is just since i got flying especially doing world quest like a crazy person and my follower has all the trinkets that give you gold when you do a world quest. So that's very rewarding. But I feel like the world quests are, if you think about it, like your, your Star Wars um, analogy, you have your story and then you have side quests. I feel like the world quests are kind of like the side quests in a way. Because they all have a little bit of that magic to them where you're not missing out if you don't do it. But if you do, sometimes you'll get like Cadgar talking about, oh, I dropped these coins for someone special. And then you get to thinking and you're like, who does Cadgar have a crush on? <laughs> and that Himself. leads your mind to a whole different story, Himself. like a trail, a bunny trail of storiness. And there's still world quests, even though I've been doing them for freaking ever that I'm coming across for the first time. And it's it's really magical in that way because it feels like the world is alive, but I'm not stepping out of that main story thing. It's not like I'm working on the main story for an entire week straight. I can go and experience yeah. the rest of Azeroth. Yeah, and you know I'm with that too, uh, just with the idea of I, I've got an alt that's at 110 now, and I'm I'm working on getting her like artifact up but not really and since i'm pouring so much into my main i i've still got what nine other like a hundreds that i need to level which by the way at some point i'm going to put up a poll to see which class i should do next because i like story well, and 
Well, if the order hall is really cool and people vote for it, then yes. Is your um, mage 110 yet? Yes. Okay. My my, my uh, horde mage is definitely 110. My alliance mage is still sitting at 100. Oh, but... there it is. Alliance mage next. Bam, done. <laughs> well, the thing but is... I decided for you. I, I'm tempted, though, because I really want to see uh, Stormheim through an alliance eyes. Just because that's the only place that I know of that's actually difference between or different between horde and alliance. So we'll see what happens. Um, but, you know, I, I like the idea of having downtime and everything like that. And I'm OK with that. You know, I, it, I'm not saying it needs to be all gung ho story all the time, because even when I was doing the Suramar quests, you can tell when it was the end of a week storyline because it's like, hey, give someone fruit now. It's like, oh, OK. Right. All right. Um, yeah, I love giving. Why can't fruit. I just have a basket and just hand it out to everybody and <laughs> Look, then fix everybody and then we'd be good? The tree only makes one piece of fruit at a time. <laughs> it's like trying to garden in real life when you don't know what you're doing and you, you're growing beans and you get like one bean and you're like, yes, this is dinner. One green bean. <laughs> this will do. Yeah. I Plus, grew I, it myself. I feel like I fed <laughs> the same people multiple times. Like my logic was like, Hey, I don't want the kids to suffer, so the kids get the fruit first. And, like, so... But I'm pretty sure I just kept giving it to the same kid because it was, like, the first kid I saw <laughs> after I got the quest. The one that's walking around with yeah. the parent, right? And then I was like, yes. hmm, I think this kid is bogarting all the fruit. <laughs> <laughs> like selling it on the uh, the Chaleron black markets. Yeah, everyone else is, hey, like, I... <sighs> and turning into withered. And this one kid's just like, I'm good. No <laughs> got this, you guys. No I'll mana issues like, here. Yeah. Like, I'm good for many lifetimes because you only need one piece of fruit and you're good for the rest of your life. Yeah. Right. It's like, hey, I got this fruit over here. Who wants to give me some mana for it? <laughs> I, I don't know why they're yeah. asking mana. There's no reason for that. Anyways. Um, but no, having, you know, the, the breaking points and stuff, it, it let me, okay, well, it's getting late. I'm going to stop for now. That was nice and handy. Um, but again, I'm going to go back to 5.1, which was even if you just lock in and do three, you know, dailies and there's no story attached to it, you're good for the day. It's fine. And you can go and do all your other stuff and whatever you, you want to do. And back at that time, I was actually actively, you know, leveling my characters because there wasn't boosts. There wasn't Legion invasions going on to, you know, get fast XP and things like that. So it, it did give me time to do other things in game. Whereas now it's like, OK, you do pour so much into your main that I mean, some people say that it's alt friendly, you know, this expansion. I mean, some people say that every expansion, some people say it's not alt friendly, every expansion. Um, to me, I don't have the time to pour into multiple alts this time. So the fact that, yeah, you can get a whole ton of, you know, artifact knowledge right away is great, but I'm not spending all of my time leveling and I even have flying now, so I should. But I don't know. It's. It's just is one of those things where this why I have too much. Is it too little? Everybody's complaining and everybody wants something that they don't have. I think so, I had an epiphany just now. Here's you met a... someone named Tiffany? What? No, I had an epiphany. Could, could you say that again? Epiphany. Faster? Epiphany. <laughs> Let's say it till it loses all meaning. <laughs> now spell it. So, nope. Uh, so, uh, you know, to, to kind of go back to what Kara was saying earlier, uh, which was finding the story within the world quest, I was thinking about that and I was like, I guess I have heard Cadgar talk about the gold coins and like weird stuff before, but I usually ignore him. I usually <laughs> ignore that blurb of text. I've never really thought of those as stories, so I never pursue them, nor do I get excited about them. And I was wondering why, because that's not normal for me and i think i've well hello discovered hero what the let me tell is. you about a, a secret love of my life that i've had is that oh, i play up, a rogue and <laughs> so apparently it's the class that speaks to me because when it comes to world quests i'm like well what's in it for me and Kagar's like well let me tell you about the coins that i'm like shh, 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 shh. what's the reward Kagar? i don't care what you want me to do just tell me the reward well, I'll I have this, this, let me, this, this girl that I, shh, 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 <laughs> I just want your nether shards. I just That's want it. you shh. to give me this item and give me a nice roll on it. Will you let it roll high for me? Well, the love of my, shh, 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 
hero. Champion. <laughs> that's it. That's that's all I tend to care about. So it's just like, oh, Illidan's talking to me. Uh, quiet, Illidan. What, what are you giving me for this? So I don't know. I guess I play the right class. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it, we, we've come to that decision many times over. <laughs> Really I'll share something then. My past Warcraft experience, I would turn off all the sound in my game, and this was before we had voiceover stuff, and um, I would just, you know, have on music or Netflix or whatever. And now with Legion, I forced myself to keep sounds on, read quest text, listen to all those little voiceover pop-up things, and it has changed the game for me entirely. Like I was interested in lore before, but with this expansion, I'm just, I'm so involved in it. And I think that's something that if you play a rogue, maybe you don't get to experience. <laughs> <laughs> we have our priorities, us rogues. Exactly. <laughs> Now, if Khadgar started, like, the part he got me interested for was dropping gold coins. I was like, go on. And he's like, And they well, give you a rainbow afterwards. <laughs> what is this quest? Because I don't think I've actually done that one. It's on the Broken Shore. I did it this morning. It might still be up. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'm going to see what I can do about that then. Indeed. You know, is it bad that when you said, uh, you know, he used to turn down or turn off the sounds and everything, that I pictured you just making up stories for everybody? <laughs> Hi, could you please go kill five boars for me? <laughs> like the Beavis and Butthead of Warcraft. <laughs> exactly. Yes. I, uh, I know someone is out there who does that too. <laughs> but it's funny because the the most I've played WoW recently was when I was really invested in watching something on Netflix. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, I want to watch the show on Netflix. All of a sudden, my WoW time skyrocketed. And I think think it is because that game is engaging me on one level which is gameplay and having you know this fulfilling gameplay loop but it's not engaging me on another and you know contrast and again i'm not trying to tell people that old republic is a better game than wow i don't it's think, so different i don't think so it is, but i also don't think you can compare them at this point anymore because I'm basically playing a single player game when I play Old Republic. But like that playing through that story experience had me pausing whatever I had on my second screen. It was like, no, shut up, other thing. I need to listen to this. This is big. This is important. Um, and I need to pay attention to what my character's doing. Uh, and like getting really excited about my character and feeling cool things about my character and like knowing I got to a moral quandary. Uh, in that game recently where I had to save. It was basically the Caden Ashley decision. Um, and you killed Caden, right? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I guess I did in this case. I don't know. <laughs> but I actually would have saved the person I didn't save me personally, but I had been telling a story with my character and I had certain rules about what this character would and wouldn't do. And this character would not have gone and saved that person. And so I made the decision I actually would rather have not. And it's cool to have a video game and a character that doesn't exist inform your decision instead of, you know, like me as the player making that decision. Mm -hmm. Like that was a really cool moment. And so that's the kind of thing that I stop what's on the second screen for. Whereas, you know, wow, time goes up when I'm watching mystery science theater 3000 or whatever might be on, it's like, ah, oh, yeah, I'm going to watch that and play some wow at the same time. It'll be good. Well, you know, it's funny that you say that because as I was going through the Surmar stuff, you know, on my second screen, I've got Gilmore girls going on and enjoying that and everything. And then all of a sudden, uh, Oh, we're getting to, you know, I'm, I'm out there, you know, just killing five things or doing whatever. And it's like, Oh, story time pause, watch what's going on and everything like that. So I was doing the same exact thing, but different game. Uh, of course, then again, when I was uh, playing SWOTOR not too long ago, I was doing the same thing that, you know, as well. Just something's going on and on my screen, all of a sudden, oh, pause this. Story is people talking. People done talking. I know where I need to go. Cool. Unpause. Go where I need to go. Yeah. Could it so, be that in Warcraft, the characters we interact with feel sort of inconsequential, where we feel like it's okay to ignore them and what they say? Yeah. Actually, 
Yeah. I mean, you know, we were talking, uh, this was, uh, I think it was a uh, pre-show, but, uh, again, going back to Stuotor versus WoW, John was talking about how, you know, in, in World of Warcraft, he's hero champion. Whereas in Stuotor, what were you? The, the emperor's like, or emperor of no, some place. I'm literally or the leader of the galaxy right now in World oh. Republic. There's oh, a, well, there's that's a third, the there is a third faction that the Empire and the Republic bow down to, and I'm the leader of it. Oh. Okay. So. Not quite the same in Warcraft. <laughs> no, okay, never mind. Maybe bad example, but I'm still going to kind of roll with that. I'm like where... Kill J. I'm Sargeras. To put it oh. in WoW terms, I'm Sargeras. <laughs> Although maybe not Sargeras because he's kind of dead and just coming back, so maybe just kill Jaden at this point. I don't know, but I'm a big deal. Okay. Uh, but, <laughs> it, you know, it, it, the idea behind that, though, kind of goes back to with Swotor, it was, you know, more of an immersion with your character, whereas with WoW, it's, I don't know, is it just immersion with the world? I mean, Role playing is the thing; it's in the game, but there's nothing that really, you know, challenges you and forces you. There's no moral quandaries. There's nothing like that. And I'm not saying that it's bad storytelling; it's just a different kind. But it does go along the lines of uh, Kara, like you were saying, how the the NPCs that you kind of talk to they're they're a little inconsequential because not really, you know, you don't really need to listen to them in order to know what's going on. Just kind of like, oh well big overarching story we don't really need to know the fine details on this yep. um you know whereas when we first started the the broken isles you know in the expansion there was something important something story driven and very cinematic happening with people dying and, and it was big but now that we're doing like you know just these kind of piddly you know errands essentially uh versus all that other stuff it's just kind of like okay go kill these things cool i'm done yeah you know? it's like cadgar and maya you guys got this handled like Tell me what to do. I'm good. Let's go. Yeah. So, I don't know. But, uh, you know, something that I did notice that I think is actually really cool is that if you look at the... What is it? The the Armies of the Broken Shore or whatever the heck that faction is. You know how they have the banners up. There's the symbol of the, the, like the fell spear all cracked and stuff. And then all the different little banners, like, sticking out. I love that it incorporates all the different classes into that and it shows, Hey, everybody's like working together and doing this and stuff. And like, it's a tiny little story touch that I absolutely loved. And I noticed the other day and I'm, I just wanted to share that. I really like it. <laughs> yeah. That's, I that's ruined scary. my transmog cause I got exalted and I had to buy the tabard and wear it because that's the only thing you can do right now when you hit exalted. It's like, okay, I get this. Woo! <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Yeah, and of course you're wearing robes, so tabards look horrible with robes. I don't uh, care or what sweet robes you're wearing. Belts. They found a new way to make tabards bad, which is if you want to wear a robe, it's always been bad. But if you also want to wear a cool belt, you also get a bad tabard. Oh, really? I never noticed that. Yeah, if you have a belt that has any sort of like hangy down bits, <laughs> it's an unfortunate Just name, flipping. but you know what it is now, so <laughs> there it is. Uh, it also breaks your tabard. Oh, well, that's a bummer. Yeah. Womp womp. So you were talking about feeling like you're Sargeras in Sargeras. How do you guys say that? Sargeras or Jarrah? <laughs> Usually I'll say Sardella's Pizza and Wings because that's what I think <laughs> every time I hear his name. All I right. just say, I say GIF. I say GIF too. So that guy, um, it made me think of the little instance where you go back and you play as Illidan during the um, Black Temple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys know that instance? Oh, yeah. Um, where it's like you are Illidan and then the raid team is coming at you and like <laughs> yes. your character is part of the raid team. What if they gave us some kind of instance like that where we are Sargeras? That would be And we cool. get to play and like see it from his eyes. That would be so fun. Oh, you know what would be awesome? That. Yeah. No, it, it's like him... Versus all the other Titans or not Titans or are they Titans or God? Yeah. I'm what yeah. So him and all the other ones, either him fighting them and defeating them so that we can see. And maybe it's like a look through my eyes. This is why I'm doing what I'm doing. Like he's trying to totally dark side you or it's something just along the lines of, uh, you know, maybe the the 
the holy light thing or whatever that we got. Uh, just like, hey, this is what he saw. This is you know developing him since it it's the thing that helped us with all the Illidan stuff. That would oh, be, be really so cool. cool. And that's the thing. We're talking about these ideas of story. You know, how do they depict the story of Warcraft and Azeroth and the lore and everything because it's so massive? How do they get us involved? And we are psyched to do these things, hypothetical things, of course. But <laughs> there are those moments that when you play them, like the Illidan thing, it's just like, wow, this is so freaking cool. I love this game. And I think that's the thing. We all just want more of that and less of the go collect 100 doodads. Yeah. yeah. We just want to play and just enjoy. Well, let me, yeah, in fact... Oh, go ahead. Uh, I just want to ask you both. Uh, so part of me feels like sometimes the story gets a little neutered because they want to... Uh, it's because of the tabard you're wearing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hang you down bits. Immediately neutered. Story. Thanks, Ben. And uh, so it feels like it get the story gets neutered because they want to build a set canon for the Warcraft universe. They, they can't say that it was the Alliance that killed the Lich King. They can't say that it was the Horde that killed the Lich King. Um, but they can certainly say Old Man Crothers killed the Lich King if they have him do it in the cutscene. Old Man Carruthers. <laughs> yep, it's in the is that books. That's what Thrall's name is now. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, or Thrall with Deathwing, or or any any of the characters that step in and deliver last hit. You know, Gul'dan died the second time to Illidan. Old Man uh, Carruthers. I wouldn't have gotten away with it if it wasn't for you, pesky kids. <laughs> I couldn't think of his name, so he just he became Old Man Carruthers, and. But this is not always the way it's been in WoW lore. Anixia was killed canonically by Varian. Uh, it happened in the comic books. That's not how any of us remember it. We didn't get some big cutscene where Varian comes in and kills Anixia when we did it. Um, that would be so horrible. She's just laying on the ground, like, like twitching, like, oh, I'm going to die. He just kind of walks in, stab you in the head, and then walks you. out. <laughs> Boom! Headshot, and then he goes running out. <laughs> oh, thanks, you can have the man. loot. <laughs> I will take the glory. Um, but <laughs> I, do either of you have a have a preference to that? I mean, would you rather see us get the killing blow and then find out in a book later that no, it wasn't you, or do you enjoy the more cinematic take where, okay, you're never going to get the credit, but here's at least some cool story to go with it. Oh, Kara, feel free to go first. I'm still <laughs> forming my opinion yeah. and I'm going to shove it all on you. I don't really have a preference. I think, um, I think it's just however they deliver it. As long as it's well told story, I think that's what we focus on because if the story and the way they tell us kind of sucks, then we're all disappointed. Right. Um, yeah, that's a really good question, and I don't think I have a very good answer. <laughs> well, I mean, okay, so th this kind of goes back to, uh, John, your headcanon. How even though in-game you've always, you know, been in the fights where we've killed things and, you know, defeated, you know, massive amounts of enemies and stuff like that. But in your headcanon, you always kept yourself out of those situations just because... Uh, I don't know if you were just kind of playing along with Blizzard's take on it or because, I don't know, you're of the role playing mind of I can't make my character the I can't make my character Ronin. You know, yeah. I, I can't be the single best thing in the world. So you're at least keeping it so that it's you know, kind of grounded. And that's cool. Um, yeah, I but, think the biggest thing I ever had in my head canon as far as like impact on the world is I think within my own story, I was the one who breached that side door entrance for uh, Ice Crown. Yeah, like it was my oh! is my team that caused that hole that everybody later would run through. Like, but that was it. That's as close to a big impact to the world mm -hmm. of Warcraft that I was ever like, yeah, my character did that. Yeah, and see, I'm kind of with you on that too because the only thing that i was actually you know in my mind officially a part of was on my mage killing uh mal mal i can't think of his name now Ma i want to say malgalos but i know that's totally not malagos, malagos. thank you 
<laughs> Malgalas. Malgalas? What the? Well, he totally lost when he came up against us. Haha. Uh-huh. Anyways, no. Good job. Good job. Um, you know, I, I had my mage, you know, fight him and then get hit with like a huge blast of arcane energy, which explained my head cannon on why I switched from fire to arcane because, you know, it's the better spec at the time. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, other than that, yeah, I've kind of kept it away as well. And I like the idea that because it is a two faction system, Blizzard doesn't want, you know, one faction kind of higher than the other being able to say, oh, well, we took out Garage. Like, can you imagine what that would be like? I mean, there's already issues where like, oh, yeah, well, we had to come in and save you from Garage. Meanwhile, the Horde's like, well, we were fighting against him. And, you know, th- there's that whole argument and all that stuff. But yes, exactly. Um, And I'm still saying the horde retreated. Otherwise, we would have been wiped out and then the alliance would have been wiped out, too. Anyway, get that in there. um, Yep. Got to got (laughs) to stick that in there. But um, no, it's one of those things where I like that Blizzard is having that sort of canon and it's able to to keep a cohesive story on it. Whereas like I didn't even know that it was canon that Varian killed Anixia. And it's not even something that I super enjoy because now I'm like, oh, well, Varian did it. OK, that's fine. You know, whatever. But I don't know. It's I, I can see where it's kind of an issue because we're the ones who are doing all the hard work and everything. But then all of a sudden, you know, um, Tyrion pops along and kills the Lich King. So I don't know. Please, old man Crothers. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Old Man Crothers and his Ashbringer. Oh, oh okay. this, we've got to I, stop you. I have a story, you guys. So I was listening to uh, For Azeroth with Garrett and Joss, and mm-hmm. they were talking about if you go back to Old Hills, Brad Foothills um, dungeon, instance dungeon, you can go to South Shore and see Sally Whitemane as a child. And I was oh. like, are you freaking kidding me? That's amazing. So, of course, I had to go back there and see. And... It's not just Sally Whitemane. There's so much other stuff. Oh, yeah. And there's a you... ton of lore characters in there. It's insane. And, like, you walk into the inn and you see all these, like, old characters and they're talking and you get to, like, see a thing about the Ashbringer. And I'm just like, oh, my God. Seriously? I no idea it was there. Yeah. Yes. Like, if you haven't gone back in a while and you're interested in lore, totally just go back in there. You don't even have to do the instance. Just run to the little South Shore section of it and just look around and take screenshots and squeal like I did. Because it's it's really amazing. And I wish stuff like that was more prominent in the game so that we knew, like, hey, there's these little bits of stories here and there that are just kind of, like, off and they're not part of a quest or an instance or any kind of objective. They're just there. Mm -hmm. For you to go and check out and experience oh yeah and you know while you're there make sure you do it on heroic so that you can get don carlos's famous hat yeah always good that's hat. important uh yeah. i think the thing that i because i don't know if i have a solid answer to my own question that i asked you guys <laughs> uh the thing that i think about and i even saw it in the chat room and it was one of the examples i was considering which is um and Gul'dan being the other is you know you have a character like Varian that the alliance can really be proud of like Varian is a good character he's a character that I hated for a good chunk of time because I was Horde and he hated Horde so I hated him and that I came around to think that he was one of the better characters in WoW and mm-hmm. where even I felt like his death and was like oh man that sucks and was bummed about it like for that character to then not get avenged by the Alliance players, but instead to get avenged by Illidan is okay from a lore perspective, I guess. But I, I just don't, I don't know. I mean, I wasn't an Alliance player. I didn't do it at the time, but like, were you satisfied when you killed Gul'dan, but then Illidan killed him? Was it like, yeah, we got revenge or was it more like, well, Illidan got revenge. Because I got to tell you, and maybe this is just me being a twisted individual that I shouldn't admit to this, but, like, again, going back to the Old Republic, there's something very, very satisfying about if a character betrays you in that game and you get a decision of whether or not you take revenge on them, you know? And, and if somebody yeah. does something bad and, you know, there was a guy in a in a recent one where he, like, stranded you... And, uh, 
tried to kill you, tried to murder you and all of this, and you finally catch him, and he's being held in the air by the force, and it's like, okay, what are we going to do with him? And you get a choice, and you get to decide, no, I'm going to take revenge on this guy for what he did, and both me and the the empress of the empire are going to impale him at the same time with lightsabers. Like, that's satisfying. That's the kind of end I wish we could have gotten on Gul'dan, and instead we got an amazing cutscene, but it wasn't our characters. It was Illidan, um, and we softened him up, but is that really fulfilling? And I guess I don't know. I don't know the answer, because I still don't know if there's a better way or not. Hmm. I don't know. John, have you have you defeated uh, Gul'dan yet? Yes. Okay. I mean, I got to say that cinematic's really freaking cool. It's super cool. It's amazing. So <laughs> we get that, which is really neat. But okay. maybe the I... better example is Garrosh, for example. Well, the cinematic where he dies is really cool, yes, too. It is. But we did nothing for that. No, in fact, we lost the fight prior. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I don't know. Um, again, it makes sense lore wise to keep it canonical with the characters and that. That makes sense. But then I don't know. I've never really thought too hard about it because I've just accepted that, you know, my character is never the one canonically who's there on the front lines. It's just I'm part of the game in my own way. So it's like I'm a soldier in the army. I'm not the leader of the army. Even though the order halls say I am, I really don't feel like it. No, They're the ones giving they me crap to do. do. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, leader, yeah, uh, go pick up shit. Uh, all right. Go. I guess. Feels like Look, something you all should do, but all right. I guess <laughs> well, I'll go. We're out of apples. Can you go get some <laughs> apples for it? What's... Um, I don't know, but I mean, the only other way to do this is. I mean, and this is going to be a horrible idea, but whoever gets world first, those are the ones who canonically kill, you know, the the, the raid boss. It's like, yeah. oh, did you hear who took out Gul'dan? Yeah, uh, Joey 21 did, <laughs> and uh, Thrall's Balls, and also, <laughs> um, you know, Sephiroth XX, and uh, don't forget Lego Lass. Uh, they all killed Gul'dan. Yeah, but I don't think that's what I'm presenting as the alternative. I'm thinking more <laughs> along the lines of what they have done already, which is the Varian and Nixia thing, where it's like, you're there, you do it, and then later, canonically, you'll find out differently. <laughs> it's like, it's like, yeah, uh, Hermione saved the day, and then you'll read in the papers that Harry Potter is the hero. Yeah, that is something that bugged me about those books a ton. I'm not gonna lie and then he becomes an or what he, he can't do anything sorry Harry i don't know Potter tangents yeah always we don't have those often we don't always have them but when we do they're the potterist sure i don't know yep um well yeah i i like the idea that we at least get to see what happens as opposed to varian killing anixia so I there's that either way is okay because there have been times where I'm reading the novels and like Chronicle and all the outside of game resources that they give us for lore. And I get that feeling where it's just kind of like, oh, oh, that's what, ha oh, that's cool. Okay, cool. I like this. Right. Yeah. But there is a magic to seeing it in game as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I like either. Either works. Well, I just, I'm glad we have content. I'm yeah. <laughs> yep. 7.1 patches of as, it so far. As opposed to running Wait. Siege of Orgrimmar again. Oh, I kind of want to do that now. I like Siege Four of Orgrimmar. Months I really liked it. Fire Citadel. Yeah, that's the one. That wasn't that as much fun. I didn't run it, though, so <laughs> I guess that's why it didn't come to mind. So I was already. Although out. there were some pretty cool fights in there. Sure. There was yeah. Goo Guy, and there was the. <laughs> Look, there's Orc number one, Orc number two. Hansy, we had another Hansy in there. That was Hansy, pretty good. There was Big Mech. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, Samus. Vince McMahon. That was pretty good. That's what I call him. <laughs> the there, there was a lady fight was in there. The trash fight. Yeah. No, that was the worst. Uh, right, John? 
Wait, which one? <laughs> the trash fight. The, the very first, first one. Fight. Oh, Hellfire's yeah, fault. that one yeah. was garbage, literally. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> Although the uh, still the spoils of Pandaria still one of the best fights in the game because of boxes, right? I don't know if I ever saw all of the. Yeah. OK, first of all, spoils of Pandaria is a fantastic fight. All it needed. <laughs> Apparently, all you need to do to make me care about content is to tell me not to do something and then me do the thing and it be okay. Because uh, that's what got me on board with Spoils of Pandaria. But uh, I don't know if I ever saw all the bosses in Hellfire. I think I did. Well, we'll I have to go I, through there at some point. I know I got the moose, so I, know <laughs> I definitely did well, the end. And I remember no, no, we... most of the beginning. We got a very nice invite to get the moose. Yeah. Oh, I'm not yeah, saying so you, so you I saw earned Manor the moose. In our, come on. No, no, no. I'm not <laughs> saying that. I, look, um, you raided with us for a little while in there, so you saw the trash and probably the first few fights. Do you remember the the Kilrog one? Uh, yes. Where like you go inside like an alternate yeah, future where dimension he was thing. All gross, and there were people walking. <laughs> no. There were ghosts, right? Wasn't he in a pool? Oh, no, that was Gorefiend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. No, no, I'm talking about how um, there, there's, like, he, he throws the knife out, and then it spawns a little blood thing that goes to him, and if it gets to him, it heals him. And then there's other dudes who run up there. That and sounds if they, familiar. And they reach him, and then they get really big and strong, and then we wipe the raid because we can't handle, like, more than two. I don't know if I ever saw him die, but that fight sounds familiar. And there's a lot of stuff on the ground, right? Uh, yeah, and like we have to randomly run around because like Fell's falling from him. He's shooting it up in the air or something like that. I remember a lot of people and then yelling three people go into the vision and not knowing the things I needed to do. So I just kept hitting him. <laughs> no, no, you were right. You're melee. You just it's okay. the easiest. Like okay. that is seriously the easiest raid <laughs> when you're on melee, uh, because, you know, th that's the raid where I went from. Oh, no, it was uh, OK. So it was black rock, whatever. Whatever the one before that was, that was all orcs as well. But it was red at least. Um, that's when I actually uh, switched to heals. But when we were like, you know, over, we had too many healers and everything. I switched to DPS and I'm like running melee through that whole raid. And I'm like, this is the easiest thing to do in the world. You just stand here and punch stuff. And then you stand over here and punch stuff. And then that's it. So, yeah, nice and easy stuff. I remember some fight with fancy people. There were like three fancy people and they might have been orcs and not fancy people. I don't know why I think they're fancy. <laughs> why are they fancy? I the don't fancy know. men. I don't, I don't know, but anyway. It's like an orc wearing a dress and two orcs wearing tuxedos. <laughs> I don't know why I think they're fancy. Is that room has a gun nice? he's shooting with this? You know who I'm talking like, about, right? It's, I have no idea who you're talking about. It's a fight against three orcs and there were ghosts involved, I think. Oh, the yeah, where it's like a, an arena kind of area. Yeah. Yeah. There's the one over here. OK, yeah. OK. Forever will be known as the fancy orc fight. now. <laughs> yes. were, were they fancy at all or was the room fancy? No, no. There's something that felt fancy about that fight. There was a lady in it. Maybe that's maybe, where your maybe brain that's has it. the issue. Yeah, I guess. I mean, they, they it's like an arena kind of. So they, they started up here and then jumped down and attacked. You know what it could have been? It could have been the ghosts. I immediately equate ghosts with fanciness. They're like banshees. Yeah, but they show up like, you know, the Haunted Mansion is a mansion. It's a fancy party that ghosts show up to. Wait, like are, are you saying are you saying that the banshees are yeah. fanshees? Karazhan full of ghosts. <laughs> fancies. Yep. <laughs> I love this word combination. Anyway, that could be it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It works for me. Uh, well, Kara, thank you very much for joining us. It's been an absolute blast having you on. Um, where thank can much people? For having me on. Oh, you bet. It was fun. We're gonna have to get you on again. It was Talking fancy. About words and things. Yes, it was fancy. <laughs> uh, you can find me on Twitter at Zandara X A N D A R A. Perfect. You knew right where <laughs> I was going. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, John, what about you? Where can people find you? Hi, Ben. Hi, John. Uh, hey, everybody. John here. And if you want to hear more from me, you can follow me on Twitter at John underscore Jagger. Or you can say, hey, John, I want to hear you talk about Heroes of the Storm. And I'll say, well, you can. And you just need to listen to Core. 
Core. Sorry, I was in the middle of swallowing. <laughs> Core. There we go. One more time. Let's, let's try that again. Hey, John, I want to hear you talking about Heroes of the Storm. Oh, well, you can check out my Heroes of the Storm show, Core. Core! Which you can find out more information about at heroesforyou.com. Now, Ben. Yes, John. Are you eating anything at the moment? Are you free to talk? No, I'm good. Free I just, to talk? I, well, hold on. Let me take a drink. Nice. Well, <sighs> well done. Thank uh, you. Hey, if I was yes. somebody fancy and I said I would like to know more about Ben. Big where if. Where can. What? That's a big if. If oh, you were someone. I thought fancy. you said big N and I was like, are you capitalizing the last letter of your name now? Yes, my name is Ben. It's Ben. ben. <laughs> it's Ben with a big N. We call those capital <laughs> letters, Ben. <laughs> Tell us where we can find you. Uh, the best place you can find me is on Twitter. I am at Ben the Mage. Normal size N, though. Uh, and I also do a show with Aludra called Battle Pets, where we talk about battle pets in the world of Warcraft. Not as fancy as core, apparently, but what were you trying to get fun. me to yell battle pets? No, not really. <laughs> battle it, just, pets! it doesn't work as well. Battle yeah! pets! There we go. That works. Uh, this show, however, it's got too many <laughs> syllables it. is the problem. It's I know. Like you can't how, just go bat. It's like how the Power Rangers all say just the name of their dinosaurs, but Tommy always has to add Zord to the end of it. And it's kind of <laughs> weird. And I know why he does it, because just saying dragon makes you sound weird. If he was just, like, morphing and he was just like, dragon, people would just be like, eh, Tommy's weird. Those aren't real. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> there is a Tyrannosaurus, but you're just a dragon. I get why, but I don't know. It was always weird. Anyway. I can't Perhaps. wait for the upcoming um, Mr. Rogers memes. Yes. yes. I want to know what the Mr. Rogers memes are going to be. Uh, the first one, Tommy wait. AFK. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy AFK all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this show, however, unfortunately, uh, we do not have Mr. Rogers on it. But if you want to listen to all of our episodes, just to make sure, you can always go to iTunes, Stitcher, or AzerothRoundtable.com. Now, if you have any questions, comments, want to tell us what you think about your hero never getting in that final blow on the boss, go ahead and email that to AzerothRoundtable at gmail.com. And, of course, our intro contains music from those wonderful, amazing folks at Blizzard. So uh, give them props, guys. They do awesome work. Yay! I give them all the props. This one looks like a gun but is not. And this one is a 2 by 4 that will break in half if you hit someone with it. And, and this one looks wig. like... Yep, Ooh, one of those. Works. And Need a pound wig. Yeah, I have one Animals. that uh, it looks like a, a fancy st uh, Star Wars communicator, but it's actually a Lady Gillette razor. I want a razor that looks like a communicator. Yeah, no, in uh, in, in episode one, the little communicators that they had, they were ladies' razors. Hmm. Modified slightly and painted Yay. like black. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to know. My mind is blown. Thanks for that trivia, Ben. You're welcome. It's just one of the many things I offer. Yeah. Another one is cattails. Yeah, there's been a lot of cattails today. Yeah, when, and then she jumped off my desk, she hit my mic, and that was really loud. So sorry, folks. <laughs> uh, but, uh, John, is there one other thing you need to talk about? Yeah, hey, we want to talk to you about what makes this, uh, this show that we're on run. Patreon! That's right, oh. Patreon! Patreon! <laughs> And you can become oh. a patron uh, by going to patreon.com slash EzrothRT. Because, look, there's one truth I've learned. It's that it's time for the Jedi to end. But if there's a second truth that I've learned, it's that if there's a problem, you should throw money at it. So patreon.com slash EzrothRT. Let's solve a problem. So for me, John, Kara, and all of the raid bosses in the world, thank you very much for listening, folks, and have a great day. Bye, everybody. Bye. And that is a podcast episode. Yay, we did it! We... And your sky blasted the whole time, too. Sweet. Then I don't have to attempt to send you a giant recording. 
well, I'm saving the show really quick. We're just going to find out if it gets corrupted, and then we're just going to play your side of the conversation as the episode. <laughs> <laughs> That would be fantastic. You can do that one of these days. Not really. Yeah, I think it would be as popular as maybe doing 30 minutes about chicken at the start. It was 15 minutes. Seven, That's all. That the, the Mick Seven Montgomery hours. episode? <laughs> yes. We got a couple people who were unhappy. People get mad at the silliest thing. Yeah, people don't understand. It's fine. It's fine. We're all fine here. How are you? Hey! <laughs> yeah. Wow, that was fun. So I just realized I have a few notes that I didn't actually talk about, but one of them I have to kind of mention is that, um, John, your Sentinax portal uh, experience is very much akin to your hiding during trash during race. <laughs> <laughs> It Apparently, I saw it got clipped out, and then I started listening to it, and then I realized, oh, I'm the one streaming audio. I need to not listen to audio while I'm streaming. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I'm going to check that out when we're done. Uh, but, I, yeah, I did see that that got clipped. And, uh, yeah, I didn't know I did anything wrong. I thought I was just min-maxing. <laughs> <laughs> It happens sometimes. It's cool. It works. Yeah. These, these Sentinax just, beacons are aren't going to activate themselves. Are we still on Twitch? Yes, uh, we are. Yeah, for the time being. Okay. So then I'm going to say hi to all my peeps that are in the chat room. I love you guys. <laughs> yes, thanks for coming in on a Saturday. We normally don't do it then. But we appreciate it. Yeah. A bunch of my rubber chickens. <laughs> oh, Draven Dresden is a, a Sith. Well, looks like we're kicking him from the group. Uh, I hate to tell you, but my main character that controls the galaxy right now is a Sith. Oh, the character that I was leveling up is a Jedi. Well, we wouldn't get I along at all. I picked the perfect shirt for today. You sure did. did. I saw. That's a cool shirt, too. Thank you. It's comfy. Is it, it like a comfy. hoodie? It's one of the, It's like not a hoodie. So it's like a turtleneck, not... It's like a loose it's turtleneck. Like a mock it's kind of a hoodie. Hoodie neck. It's like it's a mock it's hoodie fashion. Neck. It's, it's a fashion. way to cosplay that one blood elf guy. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the stream didn't see that part. Dang. Oh. Sorry, stream. <laughs> That's okay. You're just looking very fancy. 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 Fancy like a banshee. Yeah, yeah. Love it. You guys are so fun. Like, I, this is really weird because I listen to you guys all the time, but like I never really talk oh, to you, you a lot. So it's really nice to actually get to talk to you. But it's also that whole thing of like, like I feel like I know you guys better than you guys know me because I get to listen to your show all the time. So it's it's interesting. That's all. I'm well, trying not to be like, oh my god, I'm such a fan. <laughs> you know. But I, I totally consider myself one of your fans. So. Oh, well, thank you. Well, you were a super All the fun guest, in and my ear. we will definitely have you on again. So I hope you had fun. I did. I am available almost all the time. So, well, except for like at night, because like I sleep. <laughs> Which is when <laughs> like, we record. So great. exactly. That's why I usually listen to the download. <laughs> yeah, because my husband is a breakfast chef, so he wakes oh. up at like five in the morning. And so we have like an early old person bedtime so that we're not exhausted all day. And it's just, it works out better that way. So yeah. I unfortunately miss a lot of really fun opportunities because I force myself to have a bedtime, but I'm so glad that you guys have this like weird uh, Saturday thing that I could join in. It just worked out perfect. Yeah. It was great. I'm glad it did. We'll uh, keep you in mind for all of our Saturday shows. <laughs> okay. I kind of like so recording on Saturday. I mean, we're not not that we're announcing making a change or anything. I just it was a nice change up. I liked recording on special Saturday. Episode. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, anyway. I should play the special episode sound. Dang. Oh well. Uh, I am going to have to call it a show and stream there because I have to start streaming again in just a little over or half an hour. Um, and I'm going to go get food before I do that. 
Okay, hold on. I gotta do my. Thing. Gotta do the special the sound. Hold on. Loading. It's getting there. It might be loud. If it's super loud, I'm sorry. Oh, I totally did that wrong. I heard something. I, I didn't have everything set up like I normally would, which is really good that uh, I have my sound. Every, yeah, forget it. Never mind. We're not gonna, we're gonna pretend that didn't happen. Big in, like everybody. A... Big in, playing us out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love your DJ skills. They're the best. Oh, thanks. I feel stupid. No. <laughs> Hold on. We're gonna do this right. Hold on. Gotta move this. Okay. Remember how I said that there is a special, the the CBS special. Well, here we go. We're doing it again. <laughs> That was such a long way to go. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Isn't it great? Worth. We did it, everybody. Yeah. You all have we a good did time. It. All right, here we go. It's DJ Ben up in here. Big yeah. in. Signing out. Big in. Wait, you should. Yeah. The dubstep Lost Woods. Woo. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, I'll stop that so that we don't get...